G'day everyone, today we're going to be looking at Colin Koenig's beautiful exhibition layout, the Collinsville Riverland Railway Company in HO and HO M30. Collinsville is a fictional 1900s Australian coastal river port and has been exquisitely constructed. Colin has undertaken the ambitious task of reliving the challenges and engineering achievements of the intrepid pioneers who conquered the unforgiving and demanding landscapes of yesteryear. The Collinsville Riverland Railway Company was constructed with a touch of modeler's license. This remarkable project is a faithful representation, carefully crafted from original photographs, blueprints and data documenting tramways and locomotives and their picturesque settings spanning across Australia. The layout itself is delightfully constructed from light gauged galvanised steel, accurately welded to ensure robustness and durability. Various sizes and types of steel were carefully selected in the mainframe to provide structural integrity. Each individual module measures 6 feet in length, allowing them to seamlessly fit into specifically designed trailer racks for easy transportation to exhibitions. The width of each module varies, ranging from 1225mm to 1180mm, depending on specific design. Notably, all modules are ingeniously interlocked, featuring fold-down legs that are integrated for added convenience during setup and display. The track bed and scenery on the two front modules primarily consist of canite board, which is originally a byproduct of sugar cane. The material is composed of laminated layers with foam infill sheets. Colin discovered that carved canite works especially well for creating sandstone rock formations. He carefully cut, carved and sanded the canite to shape the track bed and roads across most of the layout, followed by a careful sanding yeah. to achieve the desired flawless finish before painting. In the staging areas, Pico Track is securely affixed directly to painted 6mm MDF. It's important to note that when using MDF and K9, it's crucial to ensure that both sides of the material are painted to seal them in, preventing any potential swelling caused by moisture in the air. This precaution helps maintain the structural integrity and longevity of the layout. The riverbed was also constructed using 6mm MDF and is creatively painted with various colours to achieve the illusion of depth and shading in the water. To create the appearance of waves, the MDF is then coated with Selly's All Clear and smoothed by hand using mineral turpentine. Moving to the rear module, it serves as a control hub for the layout, featuring four tiers of train tracks for both staging and operation. These hills also double as a picturesque backdrop for the town, and the use of smaller trees on these hills cleverly employs force perspective to convey a sense of distance. Other instances of force perspective can be observed on the street behind the wool store, as it appears wider at the beginning and narrows at the centre of the layout. Additionally, smaller buildings have strategically been placed at the end of the street to enhance the overall illusion. The track on the layout was carefully laid using Pico Code 100 HO scale track for the broad gauge sections and 009 Pico points for the narrow gauge tramways. To achieve the specific look and performance, SL300 Pico Flexi track was chosen with most of the plastic sleepers removed and the wooden ties were glued underneath. This approach was adopted because other brands were found to be less reliable when it came to securing the track while removing some of the ties. Over time, Colin transitioned to using SL400 Pico 009 Crazy Track as it became more accessible. This careful selection of track components ensured both accuracy of the layout and its operational stability. For the three rail track, a meticulous handcrafting approach was employed. Rails were soldered to circuit board strips, following the same method used for making points. All the electrical droppers were soldered to the track and extended through the baseboard during this stage of the process. Pico point motors were directly affixed to the points and recessed into the roadbed, wires soldered to them and routed underneath the baseboard in preparation for the comprehensive wiring to come. Colin carried out all the ballasting on the track in the traditional manner, ensuring precision. 
particularly around the points. Some minor adjustments were necessary on the curved sections with super elevation to guarantee reliable and smooth train operation. This attention to detail in the track work was instrumental in achieving the layout's operational excellence. And as for the lighting, the overhead lighting is SAL LED 500K neutral daylight and cool white flexi strips. The layout operates entirely on DC power since the Heathkit electronic system are compatible with DC power. The short Yabby Baxter siding benefits from a Circuitron AR2 automatic reversing circuit for control. The remainder of the narrow gauge lines rely on various Heathkit Electronics SA boards with I.1 train decoders placed strategically to regulate and control speed or bring trains to a halt as needed. The broad gauge lines are managed using Hamlet and Morgan Clipper DC controllers. The controller's 15 VAC outputs are responsible for powering the point capacitor's discharge units. Some of the structure lights are also powered from the 12 volt VDC outlets on these units. The Heathkit Electronics equipment primarily draws power from DC 12 volt charger. Point power for these units is supplied via the CDUs. During exhibitions, the narrow gauge trains operate automatically following pre-adjusted timings and speeds by the Heathkit system. If necessary, these settings can be modified using the four adjustable points on the circuit boards. For the broad gauge trains, the points are manually operated from the staging area, providing flexibility and control for the operator. With Collinsville set in the early 1900s, Colin has tried to obtain the feel of the life and times of the hardships and engineering triumphs that our pioneers faced in the rugged terrain to obtain resources from the forests and development of prosperous rural communities. The little detailed scenes throughout the layout tell a part of this story, adding interest for the public, finding other details every time they look at the layout from a different angle. Most structures were scratch built over a 12 year period using photos, plans, historical records and known measurements, and in a variety of materials. Docks and wooden structures are made from Mont Albert scale lumber co basswood. All the wall castings and barrels were cast from Agnew's water putty and hand carved to suit. The exception is the mill, which is made from plaster. Some of the walls were cast from parts of old kits that Colin had available, reshaping them to suit where he was building. And the station is from the Outback Model Company. Most windows come from the Grand Line products, but others come from recycled models. The creation of the magnificent trees on this layer involved a creative use of nature. Sedum plants, specifically the Autumn Joy variety, which were carefully dried, painted and adorned with fibres to represent gum trees. It's truly remarkable how elements from the garden and natural surroundings can be repurposed for such detailed landscaping. Following the painting process, the landscape was further enriched with various elements such as soils, fibres, lichen, dried shrubs, roots and plants. Additionally, artist pastels were employed to weather buildings, roads and rolling stock, adding a touch of realism to the scene. Collinsville Riverland Railway Company is intentionally designed to offer a glimpse of a small part of the railway, rather than betraying the entire town or railway system. This approach leaves room for the imagination by suggesting that there is more beyond the layout's borders, achieved by having lines running off the layout. It's a captivating way to capture the essence of a larger interconnected world within the confines of the model railway. Trains and rolling stock on the layout comprise of a diverse selection. For the broad gauge, the ready-to-run locomotives are sourced from Backman Spectrum and Powerline, and many of them have had sound installed for added realism. The broad gauge wagons primarily consist of ready to run stock, complemented by some kit built stock that has been carefully assembled. On the narrow gauge, ready to run locomotives came from manufacturers like Backman, Lilliput and Rocco. Additionally, the collection features a number of N scale locomotives with HO scale, scratch built or kit bash bodies crafted over the mechanisms to add the desired appearance. Some of these locomotives have also been used on Collins other layouts such as Powertown or Jelly Brand Gorge. The narrow gauge critters, carriages and wagons are predominantly scratch built or modified from ready to run models. Colin has made the conscious effort to predominantly use micro trains couplers for the narrow gauge, as he finds that these not only offer improved aesthetic but also function effectively on the undulating terrain of the layout. This attention to detail in the choice of rolling stock and couplers contributes to the overall authenticity and operation of the model railway. The operation of the layout is quite versatile. For exhibitions, the narrow gauge trains and critters are automated to perform predefined operations on specific sections of the track, creating the illusion of a bustling town with various industrial activities. This dynamic action provides entertainment for viewers, making the layout come to life. Manual operations on the narrow gauge are primarily used for when the layout is set up at Collins' home. 
In contrast, the broad gauge can be operated manually. Trains can be changed from the staging area, or rail motors can be brought out from the dock to the main line for a run. The layout is capable of accommodating up to nine trains in operation simultaneously, assuming all controls are operational. However, during exhibitions, Colin tends to avoid running all nine trains at once as it becomes overwhelming to keep track of them whilst interacting with the public. A notable addition to the layout is a fourth module situated to the right of the Collinsville rear module. This module is based on the Teepecana Wharf in Tasmania before the construction of the Iron Bridge in 1899. The buildings in the wharf in this module are all scratch built based on historical photos, faithfully recreating the scene from Tasmania. In the construction of this module, foam was primarily used for scenery, set onto steel framework as described earlier. So after gracing the exhibition circuit in Australia for some time, this exquisite layout is now ready for a new owner. And if you're captivated by the idea of owning this remarkable work of art, it's available for purchase. Currently, the layout is situated in Stall, Victoria, approximately two and a half hours from Melbourne, heading towards Adelaide. Should you wish to learn more about this opportunity, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Colin or myself to obtain further information, including pricing details. So I hope you've all relished this glimpse into the world of the Collinsville Riverland Railway Company, and I'll see you all again yep. soon. Hooroo! Right. Yep.